In this video, we'll uh, take a look at ADC using interrupts on the STM32F7 uh, Nucleo board. So let me launch the uh, uh, let me launch the STM32QMX uh, and set the configurations. All right. So I have new project. Uh, I'm selecting my board, which is the Nucleo144 uh, F7 series. Uh, on this uh, project, we will be using the uh, ADC1. So first of all, I'm going to go pin out, clear pin outs. Uh, let me start to make sure that we can do debugging. So under sys, I'm going to enable serial wire. Uh, under ADC, I'm going to enable ADC in 3 uh, because that's a pin that's uh, on CN9 header uh, of the Nucleo board. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much it right now. Uh, I'm going to set the clock frequency to 216, the maximum that it can handle. Say OK. Uh, and then under configuration, uh, let's go and check ADC. All right. Uh, in this case, I'm going to uh, enable the interrupts. So under NVIC setting, let me go enable interrupts. Uh, let me set up, I don't know, let me say uh, that and say OK. All right, so I have set up my ADC for interrupts. I'm going to go to project, uh, change the settings of my uh, code, exercise, let me call this LEC2 ADC interrupt. I'm going to use MDK arm v5, uh, say OK, and it's going to generate a, that's done. Uh, for under settings, I also want to go and under code generator, say copy, copy only the necessary files, generate peripherals as dot c dot et, say OK, and I'm going to generate my code. So while the code is being generated. Uh, once it's generated, it'll pop up and ask me to open projects. That's what I'll, I'm, uh, I'll do next. So I'm going to open the Kyle Microvision. OK. Uh, right here is Kyle Microvision. It's now open. Let me go to the user. Uh, here's a main file. Okay, now let's look at this source history, right? Under project, it shows me the source file. Uh, I'm going to hit the build for now. But under functions, if I look at it, uh, if I look under functions, let me first look at this file right here, stm32f7xx underscore it. This file contains the different interrupt handlers uh, that are necessary for taking care of the interrupts that are going to be assigned. We enabled an interrupt on the ADC side of things on the STM32QMX. So here it is, the ADC interrupt handler. So this is the default interrupt handler, ADC IRQ handler uh, for ADC1, ADC2, and ADC3 global interrupts. Okay. Uh, next, what I want to do is I want to look at the ADC dot, uh, HAL ADC file. So if I look at this, and look at the different, uh, different. So here are all my functions. There's the start with an interrupt. That's the start with the interrupt. Uh, and then there's a stop with the interrupt. And then we'll have uh, the get value to read values from the ADC data register. Uh, that, uh, or if you if you want to read this uh, documentation of the ADC HAL ADC.C at the very top of the documentation. Uh, it shows you how to use the interrupt mode I/O to get uh, your uh, values from the interrupt uh, ADC data register. Okay, so it says you can start the interrupt, uh, use the HAL ADC interrupt uh, handler to take care of the uh, interrupt, and inside that there is a conversion complete callback function. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Okay, all right. Let's go back to our main. On the top, what I want to do is uh, Let's declare some variables that we'll be using. Uh, so let me declare a 32-bit unsigned integer variable. Call it ADC, uh, ADC. Let's say underscore data. Uh, I don't know, 10,000 points maybe. All right. So I've created that. I'll create a 32-bit variable called I. Initialize it to zero. We'll use this as a iterator. Uh, later on. So uh, I've declared my functions. Uh, remember to put your code with, used inside the user code begin and user code end so that if you make changes to the STM32CubeMX and regenerate the code, you don't 
lose the changes you've made. So those two are fine there. So in here, uh, ADC has been initialized. So the only thing we have to do now is hell underscore ADC underscore uh, start with IT. And we have it's ADC1. That's a handler for ADC1. That's it. So now the code comes through main. Uh, initializes HAL, uh, sets all the system clocks and resets and so forth, initializes the GPIO pin, sets up the ADC hardware and turns it on. And here we're asking it to enable interrupts on that ADC hardware. So when an analog signal comes in through a pin and goes to the ADC, once it's completed, its conversion, that digital value of the equivalent analog signal at the pin gets put in the A to D uh, uh, ADC's data register. Uh, so when that conversion is complete, uh, since, the, uh, since the interrupt is enabled, a flag gets raised, uh, uh, ADC conversion complete flag gets raised, and we will enter the interrupt service routine. And according to this, the interrupt nested vector interrupt controller that's in the uh, M7 uh, has ADC IRQ handler. That's the name that it's expecting. Since we generated this code uh, from the QMX, here it's calling HAL ADC IRQ handler. So let's right click on that, say go to definition of HAL. Uh, so here we are. So it handles the ADC interrupt request. Now inside this, it does checking and clearing of appropriate flags. And as I feel free to read this, uh, as we go, let's say the the conversion is now complete, so it comes to this particular function. So we'll go take a look at what that function does. But before that, let's take a look at what happens when an interrupt actually comes into the IRQ handler. All right, so here's our main program. We initialize the parameters. We enable ADC with interrupt. Now we, we're just waiting, and let's say ADC conversion happens, and we get into the interrupt handler. Typically, an interrupt handler will do a bunch of setting and checking of flags, and then we go ahead and do what we want to do in our interrupt handler. So in this case, what we want to do is read values from the ADC and put it into an array. That's all we want to do. And after that, uh, the interrupt service handler, after it does what it wants to do, quickly sets and clears appropriate flags and gets out of there so that it can be on its way. And this happens over and over again as long as the ADC interrupt keeps interrupting. Right? That's what we really want to do. So do what you want on the ADC in our case. Since this code was generated from hell, what, where, where that exists is basically inside this function. So let's go look at this function. This function is defined as a weak function and it doesn't have anything at all in it. So that means it can be overridden by a function of the same name. So let me copy that into main and place it right here. So if I place it right here uh, and let me get rid of that. So this is a function inside which we will actually put down whatever we want to, want to do inside the ADC. So let me put a comment here. That's what we want to do, right? So what do we want to do? We want to ADC, sorry, hal ADC, uh, ADC get value. And we want to get it from HADC1. And when we get that value, we want to be able to put it into uh, the array that we just declared. So that's the ADC data array. Uh, all right. Uh, let's increment the value of i, so i plus uh, plus. And let's do this only if i is less than 10,000. Uh, if i is less than 10,000, we'll grab a value from the ADC. All right, and then otherwise, what we'll ask it to do is we will basically say uh, stop the ADC uh, interrupt. So hell ADC stop interrupt. All right, so this is what we want to do. So for i is less than ten thousand, we want to increment i. Uh, we want to put the value from ADC into this memory. If not, we want to stop. So let me uh, build this code and we'll come back and run it. All right, so we're done uh, building the code. So let's go to the debugger. Uh, on the debugger, uh, I have, as the debugger comes, all right, what we want to do is add uh, 
uh, ADC data and eye to the watch window so we can keep an eye on what values uh, we're, at, we're getting. So let's add I and his ADC data to watch one, right? So I'm just going to set this up. Uh, on the nuclear board, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to bring up the waveforms. Uh, I'm going to uh, set up my waveform generator. Uh, so I have set up the wave, waveform generator. Uh, I'm going to say run. Uh, so sine wave is going in from my waveform generator into my uh, board. And uh, that should be recorded here. So I'm going to run it. Uh, so let me hit run. All right, it grabbed one value and it stopped. And so let's see, I is also just one. It didn't go to 1000. So why is that the case? So let's go investigate. Now, the reason it only grabbed one value is because when we first set it up on the STM32QMX, we did ADC1. And if you look at this, we asked it to grab only one value. We set the continuous conversion mode to disable. In other words, uh, when an interrupt happened, so what happened here, so if I get out of this debugger real quick and take a look at what really happened is it got to here once and I is less than uh, 10,000, great, so it went to ADC data, got the value, but after that, we had, we had set up the ADC channel to do only a single conversion. So after that, it was done. So what we need to do is manually start the interrupt again. So let me copy this here and say start. Now what happens is after the first conversion is done, uh, we'll start the interrupt again, and then it'll go and interrupt again and again and again until we get to the 10,000 value. So if I build this now and I run it, I should be able to see uh, the full 10,000 data points come up. So let me see that. Let me run the debugger again. Uh, I have my waveforms connected, and if I hit run, all right, so hexadecimal 2710, that's 10,000. So we have data here on the ADC. So we actually have real data here. Uh, let me get rid of hexadecimal from here as well. We actually have data here. All right, let's find out if this is actually recording a sine wave uh, of some sort. It kind of looks like a sine wave by just glossing through it. So let me uh, just create a uh, debug. Oh, let me stop this first. Stop. The debugger from running debugger functions uh, and let me let me call this my ADC value interrupt uh, I have 10,000 data points uh, my ADC underscore data that's an array and I'm going to say save as and save to where I was uh, doing the lecture MDK arm. So let me save there and let me compile. That's compiled and let me call the save valves. Okay, it's writing the 10,000 data points into my folder right now. Uh, All right, so it's done writing. So let me go to that folder uh, inside the MDK arm of that folder right here. I have the my ADC interrupt log file. Let me bring up Excel. Copy all of this into Excel and insert a waveform. So here you go. Here's a sine wave captured 10,000 points of the sine wave captured using interrupt okay so to do a quick recap in 30 seconds uh, we start the interrupt in the main part of the code and uh, when the ADC first ADC completion is done it'll go to the ADC interrupt handler which in turn calls this weak function which we overwrote in our uh, main.c. In that case, we decide to grab 10,000 data points, so we're getting the value, incrementing the index, 
and starting the interrupt again because in QMX we had only set up for single conversion.